Hello friends, in this video, I will take you through 20 sample PI cognitive assessment test questions and how to answer them. And when I say how to answer them, I just don't mean answering them correctly. I also mean answering them in the fastest way possible. And it is very critical to answer them in the fastest way possible because in the final test, you will receive 50 questions and you will only have 12 minutes, which means on average, you have like 14 to 15 seconds to answer each question. So the idea is not just to answer them right, but the idea is to answer them correctly in the fastest way possible. Now, previously I made a video where I explain in detail as to what is PI Cognitive Assessment Test, where I talk about its purpose, the format, its content, and some special tips and hacks to acing it. If you've not seen that video, I highly recommend that you first go and check out that video before you start training on how you should go about answering the questions that you will receive in the test. That is critical. It is a prerequisite before you even train to answer or train yourself to ace this test. The sample questions that I will be sharing in this video and taking you through are sample questions coming from the predictive index themselves. This is a sample test that they have created whereby they share similar questions that you can expect to receive in the final test. I will also leave the link to the sample test in the description of this video so you can check it out and practice for yourself. Now one call out before we move further. In case you find any value from this video, I have to ask for you. One, press the like button so I stay motivated. Second, press the subscribe button along with the bell icon so you get notified as soon as I put a new content on this channel. On this channel, I post content pertaining to financial and career success for early and mid-career professionals. Now, apart from that, if you want me to continue making unbiased content like this, you can also support me on patreon.com. I will leave the link to my Patreon page in the description of this video. Now, let's get rolling back into the video. Now, attempting this sample test will serve two purposes. One, it will get you familiar with the format of the test because you only have 12 minutes on the final day of the test. So you want to make sure that you're familiar with the format and the content and you don't just want to be surprised on the final day. And second, it will help you test your abilities in different sections or for different types of questions that will come in the test. So you know what are your weaknesses and what are your strengths and where you need to focus the most. A sample test has 20 questions and you have four minutes and 48 seconds to solve it, which is the same average per question that you will get in the final test where you have 50 questions. The result that you get in the sample test will have no impact on your final result that you will get once you appear for the final test of PI Cognitive Assessment Test. Now, apart from taking you through the questions in the sample test, I've also collected a large number of questions from all over the web. I will create separate videos where I will share with you those questions and how you can go about solving them getting the right answer and as I said more importantly in the fastest way possible so you can train yourself even better or more by going through all those videos I will leave the link for those videos in the description of this video now let's get rolling into the video where I take you through the 20 sample test questions now one important call out while it is very important for you to know all these hacks these tips and tricks and also apply them on the final test However, before that, you need to practice and you need to practice on a real time basis, which is a real test scenario. Now, a lot of my followers and people I coach for PI Cognitive Assessment Test came to me asking whether I can recommend a resource on the web where they can go and practice a real test format, which kind of mimics the real test. So for two reasons, one is they are able to practice their skills on how to solve the question and second and more importantly get familiar with the format because when you will go on the first day and appear for the test your mind will take some time at least 30 seconds or a minute for it to get familiar with the format the font the style the placement all of this will take some time and this will slow you down so it is better for you to appear on a sample test so you are kind of familiar with the format as soon as you click Yes, ready to give the test, you know what is coming on the screen because you've seen it before. It's just that it's a different question in and with has some different numbers, but the format, the structure and the coloring, the font, the size, the placement, everything is same. So your mind is already ready to handle the question as against trying to read and understand the format. So, as I said, it is very important that before you appear for the test, despite knowing all the hacks, tricks and tips, you practice a real time or real format or real test that kind of mimics the test that you will receive on the final day. So what I did was I sifted through a lot of information on the web to find that one resource 
which mimics the test that you should expect to receive on the final day in terms of not just the questions but also the format i will leave the link to that resource in the description of this video i highly recommend you check it out and try to practice before you appear in the final test so the first sample question is logical reasoning question all a items are green that's one fact some b items are the same color as a items that's another fact green items are not for commercial use so all the green items are not for commercial use so the conclusion is some b items are not for commercial use is it correct incorrect or cannot be determined since the conclusion uses the word some and not all which means it leaves the room open that there might be some which are okay for commercial use and on top it also says some b items are same color as a which is some b items are green so there are some items in b which are green and conclusion it also says some b items are not for commercial use and it's the green items which are not for commercial use so the statement is correct so here the tip is if you see the word some coming up in the assumption and coming up in the conclusion there is a good chance that there is possibility for the answer to be correct or true now the next sample question is which number has the lowest value here the best way to do it is use the rule of deduction so compare two options which are kind of similar and easy to compare and see which one is lowest here i will use option b and option d now subtracting 1 by 6 from 1 by 3 or subtracting 1 by 4 from 1 by 3 which one will give us a lower number obviously number d or option d because 1 by 4 is a bigger number than 1 by 6 so reducing any number by 1 by 4 versus 1 by 6 will give us a lower number so we can easily direct option b now we are left with a c and d now let's compare c and d in d in option c the number is very big which is 2 by 3 is around 0 0.66 and subtracting it with a very small number which is 1 by 7 won't give us a smaller number so we will continue to hold on to option d now comparing option d with option a here on option d we can quickly run the math which is 1 by 3 is 0 0.33 and 1 by 4 is 0 0.25 so 0 0.33 minus 0 0.25 will give us 0 0.8 roughly and 1 by 6 is not 0 0.8 so d is the answer because 1 by 6 is larger than 0 0.8 so d is the answer so here in sample question number three which of the figures below comes next in the sequence of figures shown above let's pick one symbol in the figure which is this white triangle it goes up then it goes down so the next sequence is it should be going up again so the only option that i see from the mcqs is option b or number two where the triangle is going up because on all other options the white triangle is down we can double check this one by picking up another symbol let's say black triangle so black triangle is on the right first then comes left then goes right so it will be again on the left which we also see here in option b and also it keeps going up from first symbol to the third so it was on the lowest line then it moved up one line and then it moved again up so we should expect in the sequence or then the figure that will follow it will move up again and hence that is happening in option b so we'll pick option b so talking about sample question four the two figures above share a common feature one of the figures below does not share the same feature which figure below does not share the same feature in the above figures we see only two shapes while there is one figure in the options which has three shapes so this is the one which is an odd one out sample question number five water is to cup so water is poured in a cup as flowers are two roses no petals no vase yes because flowers are kept in a vase or they are kept in the garden but they grow in the garden they're not kept in the garden so the answer is vase sample question number six which of the following is the opposite of the word extensive here comprehensive no because comprehensive is very much similar to word extensive because it kind of extends and covers ideas cover everything symbolic no very different meaning essential no restricted yes because extensive is covers more restricted is something which covers less because it's more restricted while extensive is extending so restricted is the word which is opposite 
Sample question 7, which of the figures below comes next in the sequence of figures shown above? In the first figure, we have one line and a symbol of arrow. In the second figure, we have one line and two symbol of arrows. So one symbol of arrow is added. Then in the third, we have one symbol of arrow added and then one extra line added. So each time a symbol of arrow increases because if you go from one to four, one has one symbol of arrow, number four figure has four symbol of arrow. So we look, need to look for a shape which has five arrow symbols. And clearly we can deduct D is out because it has four, C has six, so it is out. A has seven, it is out. So the only option we are left with is B, which has five symbol of arrows. So sample question eight, what is the next number in the sequence here? If you recall in the previous video that I made, I shared with you a tip that every time you are trying to answer this sequence question, you start with divisible of two or multiplication with two. So let's start with two. So if you multiply two with four, it becomes eight. So what is the difference between eight and 11? It doesn't seem to be a multiplication division. It's probably plus. So if we add three, it becomes 11. Let's use this as a rule. 2 into 11 is 22 plus 3 is 25. The rule is working. 2 into 25 is 50 plus 3 is 53. The rule is working. So 2 into 53 is 106 plus 3 is 109. So A is the answer. Sample question 9. You are responsible for mailing 80,000 letters. You must mail 25% of total letters over the next 5 days. So 25% of 80,000 is 20,000. Which means that you have to mail 20,000 letters in the next 5 days. If you plan to mail one by fifth of that amount, so one by fifth is 20% of 20,000 letters, that comes out to be 4,000 letters. So what is the total amount that you plan to mail each day, which is 4,000, which is the first answer. Now, sample question number 10 is finding the missing pair for the design. So first we need to find the relationship between the first two designs, and then we'll figure out which answer applies for the third one. So one relationship that I see is that in design one, there are black on the corner, which is the same in the second design, which are there black on the corners and there's black in the middle and it stays black in the middle. So similarly, if there is white in the corner and white in the middle, then there should be white in the corners and there should be white in the middle. The only design where I see white in the corners is design A and design B. So it is either A or B. And then there should be white in the middle and only option that I see where white is in the middle is option B. So option B is the answer. Sample question number 11. Here one tip is to start with the conclusion. So product Y is never sold to customer one and two because now you know the conclusion and from the assumption you need to see whether this conclusion can be proven or not. This kind of saves time. So product Y is never sold to customer one and two. Now customer one and customer two each buys product X and Z. That's fine. Product Y is never sold to customers who buy product Z. Now, because customer one and two each are buying both products X and Z, which means they are also owning Z because each of them are buying both of them. If both of them, customer one and two are owning Z, that means they cannot own Y, which means product Y is never sold to customer one and two and hence it is correct. Sample question 12, what is the next number in the sequence below? Here, let's first try with multiplication. So we'll use two, two into three is six, six plus one is seven, okay? Two into seven is 14. Can we add one to make it the third number? No, because it's 12. Another way to see the relationship between the first and the second number is adding four. So three plus four is seven, that's fine. Let's see if we can add four to make it 12. So seven plus four is 11 but we have to need add another one to make it 12. Okay, five. So first we are adding four, then we are adding five. Let's add another six. So 12 plus six is 18. That's working out. So 18 plus seven, and then add, we add seven. 18 plus seven is 25. So then we have to add eight. So each time one number is increasing. So 25 plus eight is 33. That's the answer. So in question number 13, the first shape is to the second shape. This is a flag shape and then there is a shape inside it which has arrows which is black in color and it becomes white so the flag shape is turns and the black inside becomes white so when we check at the house shape this house shape is to what 
it cannot be a because the house shape needs to be a house shape still as flag remains to be a flag so it can only be b c d now the black color inside turns into white color inside which means it cannot be b either so it's either c or d and the shape of the flag twists in a way that it becomes different so it twists like uh, 90 degree if it twisted 180 degree then it would continue to remain a flag or the same shape which means that our house shape will also needs to turn 90 degree and the only shape where the house is turning 90 degree is shape c so c is our answer so question 14 the two figures above share a common feature one of the figures below does not share the same feature which figure below does not share the same feature here it's the direction of the shadow so imagine the sun coming from the right side and the shadow is falling on the left side because the shadow is not completely in the middle it's kind of tilted so if we see the options the only option where the shadow is tilted on a, in a different direction which is in in the right direction is option c for all rest of the shapes the shadow is tilted slightly towards the left direction so our answer is c because this is the odd one out Sample question 15, you have invited 94 people to a meeting of those people, 11 from the north cannot attend, 7 from the south cannot attend, 3 from east cannot attend and 11 from west cannot attend. How many people should you expect to attend the meeting? Simply here we add all the numbers of the people who cannot attend which is 11, 7, 3, 11, 11 plus 11 is 22, 7 and 3 is 10 so it's 32, 94 minus 32 is 62. Sample question 16, which of the following numbers has the lowest value? Here, as I recommended, let's pick two numbers and compare them and see which is the lowest. So 0 0.45 versus 0 0.35, this is easy. So we pick 0 0.35 because this is lowest. Then compare the fractions, three by five and one by four. One by four should be a smaller number because it is one which is further being divided by four as against three which is being only divided by five. One by four is 0 0.25, so 0 0.25 is which is 1 by 4 is lower and 0 0.25 versus 0 0.35, 0 0.25 is lower. So 1 by 4 is the answer. Now finding the pair for the shape. What we see here in the first two figures is that the shape remains same, the outer shape remains same and the color between swaps. So the black goes on the corners and the white comes in the middle. So this should, this is something which should happen for our shape as well. So the dotted shade should go out and the white should come in and this only happens in option b so that is our answer question number 18 which of the following is opposite of the word conclusive here it is important for you to know the meaning of the word which is in the question here conclusive means definitive so something which is for certain the only word which i see as being opposite to conclusive is ambiguous because that is non-certain non-definitive so ambiguous c would be our answer Tired is to sleep as hungry is to. So when you're tired, you go to sleep. So when you're hungry, you are starving. No, you eat. Yes, because it's an it's a verb. It's, it won't be food. And so eating is the process which kills hunger as sleeping is the process which kills tiredness. So eat. Sample question 20. Here we need to find the sequence in the shape. So first two images are mirror image. If we put a vertical line, then the second and third image is a mirror image. If we put a horizontal line. So it's vertical line, then horizontal line, and then vertical line we should be putting again to see the mirror image. So if we put a vertical line and make a mirror image, we will result into option C, black, which is black will remain on top and white at the bottom, but on the opposite end because it's a mirror image. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you found value in this video and will be now better prepared to ace the PI Cognitive Assessment Test. In case you found value in this video, I'm sure you'll also find value in another video where I talk about how you can go about acing your behavioral interview. Because once you clear your PI cognitive assessment test, most probably you will move to the next stage of the hiring process and that is the interview. So here's the link to that video. Other than that, there is another video where I talk about one of the most underprepared interview questions that is, tell me about yourself. I will leave the link to that video here. Thank you.